e-learning gate. It opens the cognitive learning paths with the help of digital resources. Today, we'll explore how atoms transform into charged particles, which means ions, and combine to create amazing ionic compounds. It all begins with the atom, the tiniest particle of matter. Atoms consist of protons, neutrons, and electrons. Atoms are neutral because it has equal number of protons and electrons. Their charges cancel out each other. Sometimes, electrons can be gained or lost, turning neutral atoms into charged particles. These charged particles are known as ions. So, an ion the number of protons and electrons are not equal. There are two types of ions. Cations which are positive ions. Where number of protons are greater than electrons. Sodium ion has positive charge. Compare sodium atom with sodium ion. The second type of ion is known as anion, which is negative ion. In anion, electrons are more than protons. While naming anion, their name ends at IDE. For example, chlorine becomes chloride. Oxygen becomes oxide. Sulfur becomes sulfide. This is chloride, not chlorine. Compare chlorine with chloride. Now, let us explore about ionic bond. Mostly students mention ionic bond as a bond formed between metal and non-metal. Do you think the same? Great! This is not a definition of ionic bond. You are right, this is a property of ionic bond. So, can you define it? Okay, let me erase it then going to define it. Ionic bond is an electrostatic force of attraction between oppositely charged ions. Yes, correct. You are right. I always think that why atoms make ionic bonds? I mean that why atoms are not happy to stay alone? A detailed answer of your question is here. Look at the following three steps. Step 1 is about octet rule. Step 2 is about how atoms change into ions. And the last step is how opposite charged particles attract each other and convert into compound?
Let us discuss the octet rule in detail. Octet means eight. So, every atom wants to have eight electrons in the outer shell. This is known as stable shell. Look at the periodic table. Group is vertical arrangement of elements in the periodic table. Only group 8 elements except helium have complete octet. In other words, all other elements can react to complete their octet. Now for the completion of octet, the second step will start. Elements can complete their octet either by gaining or losing electron. In other words, they change into cations and anions. Metals always lose electron to change into cation. While nonmetals always gain electron to become anion. Cations and anions attract each other. These are white solid crystals of the ionic compound. Now let us see in detail the formation of ionic compounds. We will take an example of sodium chloride. Sodium is in the first group of the periodic table. The atomic number of sodium is 11. Electronic configuration shows that there are three electronic shells. Chlorine is in the seventh group of the periodic table. Atomic number of chlorine is 17. Electronic configuration shows that it has seven electrons in the outer shell. So, the one electron from the outer shell of sodium transfers to the outer shell of chlorine where seven electrons are present. In this way the octet of both atoms will complete. Now the outer shell of sodium is not the one where one electron was present. But it is the one where eight electrons are present.
In other words, after losing one electron, sodium has complete octet. Look at this process which is given below. The electronic configuration of sodium has changed. The electron lost by sodium will be taken by chlorine. Chlorine will complete its outer shell with 8 electrons and become chloride ion. Now let us try to understand a cross and dot structure. In this structure electron of one atom is represented by cross and of the other atom by dot. Let us see cross and dot diagram of sodium oxide. In this diagram, we will show only valence shell electrons. The chemical formula is Na2O. We can explain that why the formula is Na2O. Why not only NaO? So, again it all depends upon the electronic configuration of sodium and oxygen atoms. One sodium atom needs to lose only one electron to complete its octet. But on the other hand oxygen is looking for two electrons to complete its octet. The solution is that we need two sodium atoms for one oxygen atom. This solution is reflected in the chemical formula. Now let us see the properties of ionic compounds. They are all solid at room temperature. As ionic compounds have opposite charged ions and they have strong forces of attraction so, 
high amount of energy is required to break them as a result they have high melting and boiling points. Most of the ionic compounds are soluble in water. They are poor conductor of electricity in solid form. They conduct electricity when they are in molten or in aqueous solution. This is because of free ions. Look at the questions. How can we identify an ionic compound? We know that ionic compounds are formed by metals and nonmetals. The white line is a separator or borderline between metals and nonmetals. Metals are present on the left side of the white line. And nonmetals are on the right side of the white line. In the first compound Na is metal and Br is nonmetal, so this is ionic compound. In carbon dioxide, carbon and oxygen are both nonmetals. So this is not ionic compound. Find out about other compounds.